Today, I'm gonna to plot some data that I'm importing from an Excel file. The first thing I wanna do is read that Excel file into MATLAB. Once I get this read in, then I need to start cleaning up my data. So I'm gonna refer back to my Excel file, thinking about what type of data I have as I'm going through cleaning this data. After reading my Excel file in, the first thing I wanna do is clean my data. I'm not actually changing anything in my Excel file, but I am seeing all the data change that's stored in MATLAB. The first line of code that I'm doing is I'm storing the titles and then I'm removing the titles from my full data set. Once the titles are removed, the size of my data is 1200 rows. Using my first version of the for loop that I'm going through my data one at a time starting at row one, the first row I get to that has missing data is row 63. So it would remove row 63. The previous row 64 would now become row 63. So it would skip deleting row 64 and then it would delete what was originally my 65th row and now my 64th row because K is increasing by one every time. This for loop would continue until K reaches a value of 1200. But since there's an error, it breaks and it says that there's an error where K is equal to 1010. The reason this error occurs is because the current size of the data is only 1009. So remember, if we start at the first row and go until the last row, our data is constantly changing sizes as I'm deleting, but the for loop is not changing the definition for where it stops, which originally was set at 1200, my original data size. To prevent this error from happening, I'm going to start at the bottom of the list and delete rows as they come up as missing until I get to the first row. The first time I see a row with missing data is row 1,158. When it would get to this row, it would delete this row. Then it would look at row 1,157, which is my next row with missing data. It would delete that and it would continue this process until it reached the first row. The size of my data is still changing, but since I'm working my way up through the list, this changing data size is not affecting where I'm looking in the rows. I'm still looking at the next row every single time. Once I read the data in and I've cleaned it up and now I actually have working data that I can use to plot, I wanna go through and extract that data that I want to plot. So the first thing I'm extracting is going to be the prices and I wanna make sure that these are all numeric. That way I can actually use them and plot them. So right now they're cell arrays and I need to use cell to mat to convert them to actually numeric data. Whenever I'm plotting data, I need to be thinking about the context of what is it that I'm trying to display? What is it that I'm trying to communicate? If I look at the prices that I have from this Excel file, they're not sorted, they're all over the place. So when I plot it out, I see a line graph that's all over. I could use this, but I wanna show my user a graph of the highest priced coins to the lowest priced coins. So I want a line graph that's going across. Based on my goals and what I'm trying to do, I wanna go ahead and sort the data so I can use the sort rows function so I can sort all my prices. I could show all the cryptocurrencies I have on one big plot, but instead I'm gonna focus on a smaller subset of them. That way I can actually communicate to my user, here's the top 20 or top 10 different cryptocurrencies and how much they cost, and I can put labels on there. When it comes to plotting, a lot of times people have typically used X label, Y label, title to go ahead and put the appropriate labels on their plot, but not as many people have used X tick labels. This one I can use to actually have labels along my whole X axis and provide different text. So in this case, I'm providing a cell array of all the different cryptocurrency names that I'm plotting on here. And then that way you can see the name for each of these points. I originally started with 20 different cryptocurrencies, but when I look at my plot, I can't see all the names on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down to 10 cryptocurrencies. And now I can see all of those 10 cryptocurrency names. I could stop here, but again, I have all of this data. And right now I'm only displaying my top 10 cryptocurrencies. It seems very limited. So I'm gonna leave that alone and then I'm gonna use a subplot so I can put a second figure on here and then I can show here's all the cryptocurrencies in my data set. Now, again, when I'm showing all these cryptocurrencies, I'm not showing all the names of the different cryptocurrencies. So it is a disadvantage, but at least I have my top 10 and they can see the names for those. Anytime I wanna emphasize a point on my graph, I can use the text function. This is a very useful function to highlight exactly where I want the user to look and get them to pay attention to this point. If I wanted to, I could get fancy and animate it a little bit more and throw a pause in and then have it display after they've already looked at the graph to like further emphasize it. If you wanna check out an example of what animating your plot looks like, check out another one of my videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a better idea of how to plot your data now. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment and I'll be happy to respond.